Hello, I'm Bishop Doug Desitel, Bishop of the Diocese of Lafayette. Sexual abuse is a scourge that has occurred in all segments of society. It occurs in families, schools, organizations, and most sadly, in the church. It is most heinous when men consecrated for God's work have betrayed a sacred trust to protect and serve innocent children. These actions are reprehensible sins and crimes. The church's response, especially in earlier days, was inadequate and wrong. Rather than listening to survivors of abuse, helping them to heal and removing offenders, efforts were directed to protecting the institution. That has changed. While the credible allegations regarding many clergy have been made public, I've been asked since I became bishop in 2016 to disclose the names of all credibly accused clergy. After consultation with laity, clergy, and the community at large, I decided, like a growing number of bishops and superiors of religious orders, to release the names of credibly accused diocesan priests and deacons, insofar as that information could be discerned from documents and personnel files. I realized the task would not be an easy one. I wanted a review of the entire 100-year history of the Diocese of Lafayette. With the norms of the Dallas Charter of 2002, any cleric or lay employee against whom a credible accusation of abuse of a minor under the age of 18 or vulnerable adult lacking the permanent or temporary use of reason would be permanently removed from ministry or service. To accomplish this task, I impaneled a trustworthy group of lay leaders. They were to identify any credible accusation made against a priest or deacon in the 100-year history of the Diocese of Lafayette. Their findings would in turn be reviewed by another consultative body known as the Diocesan Review Board, who represent law enforcement, psychology, and education. They were to make a recommendation to me regarding the credibility of each accusation. A credible accusation is not to be considered a legal determination that the allegation has been proven beyond a reasonable doubt or by a preponderance of evidence. My promise from the outset was that if previously unknown or unclear allegations were now identified as credible, I would not fail to remove the offending cleric from ministry. And I have done so since becoming bishop three years ago. On Friday, April the 12th, 2019, I will release a list of credibly accused priests and deacons. I am most thankful to the lay volunteers who generously gave of their time and efforts in this important task. Arriving at the disclosure list required a review of some 300,000 pages of material, including the files of 802 clerics, 623 priests and 179 deacons from the founding of the diocese in 1918 to the present. It required over 700 hours of labor. Our entire diocese is grateful to those volunteers who responded in committed discipleship to this important task. The names of some clergy on the list may be painful for some family members and friends, and I am deeply sorry, but the path to healing and renewal requires that light be shown on this painful subject. All reporting is taken seriously and handled with respect. All accusations will be investigated to determine if they are credible, be reported to authorities, and offenders listed. Most importantly, I sincerely apologize and am sorry for anyone who is a survivor of abuse. I praise your courage in coming forward so that an offender can be removed and others protected. The diocese is here to offer whatever will help on your journey to healing. 
I pray daily for those wounded by abuse. If you know or suspect abuse has occurred, I again ask that you report to law enforcement, diocesan victims assistance coordinator, or the vicar general of the diocese. This contact information is prominently on the safe environment page of our website. Finally, I ask that you offer a word of encouragement to the many faithful priests who are also deeply hurt by the sins of their brothers. They continue to serve us faithfully at the altar, in the confessional, visiting the sick, accompanying the dying, caring for prisoners, and preaching the word of God. Their dedication to God's call to serve us continues. Thank you for your attention.